Thanks for staying with us. Now, if you're just tuning in, we're discussing strategies for business continuity. Let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Wayshu Africa One with the hashtag Wayshu Show or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 8038 So before we went on a break, Akanima was about to jump in. <laughs> <laughs> we don't jump in. Yes, yeah, so. so thank you. First and foremost, thank you, Abayomi. You're just dishing out wisdom. So thanks a lot. <laughs> I think, and I, I'm glad that you have a pen and paper. Mm. So I like the fact that you have started talking about um, the road to recovery and the first thing that you mentioned is assessment so I would like you to continue after I assess my business and I know at what point you know what I can evaluate my loss what follows then I was, I was going to do a follow-up question to you see so it's a two-part thing now we're talking about people getting credit from suppliers what about people that got credit from financial institutions hmm. what is the first thing that you should do when you know this had happened to you what do you do okay so let me start from the last one uh, i think it's important to communicate and i think that is the next part i was going to talk about communicate with all stakeholders mm. okay so um if there's anything covid 19 has taught us and <laughs> covid 19 has come with a lot of lessons and it is communicates effectively mm. the truth of the matter is Everybody knows what has happened. And if in reality you have been a victim of the looting and vandalization, yeah. put a mail through or a call through to your account officer or whoever is in charge. This is the situation on ground. I cannot honestly and realistically afford anything right now. Can you please work out something for me? The worst the account officer will say is do an email, copy so so and so person, I cannot make decision myself. At the end of the day, back and forth. See, there's no way they're going to push you to because at the end of the day, they need to recover the money from you. Exactly. In fact, they'll be more ready to support you. Exactly. In so you can quickly bounce back. Grow. So for a financial institution that have a huge volume of uh, customers and have network of business owners, so say you're doing clothes and you got your shop vandalized, the next thing that they should be looking at, and this also goes out to them, is, okay, on a network of business owners on our platform, who supplies clothes, who imports clothing materials. Mm. You know what? We have somebody who is guaranteed by us. Can you give um, supply mm. goods to them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. more like an ecosystem that thing. Ecosystem, mm. yeah. So the way to grow is more of ecosystem. So communication is very key. Mm. And not just to the people who lend you money, your staff. Two people, they are, they are, even if it's one person, their livelihood has been affected. Exactly. This is what is on ground. Now, don't look at them as just my, 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 my staff. They are a team member. Call them to the table. The funniest thing is ideas come from the unlikeliest of places. Places, exactly. Oh, this is the situation on ground. Be very honest and open. I cannot afford to pay your salary this month. These are the options on ground. Do you want to work part-time? How can we grow this together? What do you have to say? What are the options you have in mind? They can come up with something very interesting. Mm. In fact, they could have a connection for you to meet supplier, to meet buyers, to meet so many things. So communicate with all stakeholders. If you have shareholders in the business, it's also important to communicate with them. So you have, um, and this speaks to corporate governance, how many businesses in itself have board of directors, directors yeah. or board of advisors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for businesses that are not big enough to have directors that they can pay, what I advise is have a board of advisors. And these are maybe three trusted people that are very smart and intelligent. Again, who are much more advanced than you in, in one way or the other. Have them on board of advisors. Basically, you are picking their brains. And in return, you could give them something, a gift at the end of the year, or your product, something like that. If you have such people, you need to communicate with them, see them down. This is where I am. This is a situation, and that's why I said assessment, mm. not I need money. Mm. Okay. Assessment. It's, it's actually even wrong for you to just say, okay, now I, I've lost the uh, 50 million in my shop. So next thing is that I need money. So you first of all need to, uh, even in that um, situation, it's you need okay. to even assess, assess what the situation is. Uh, yeah. It's the same fireman approach that we all use for businesses in Nigeria. Because when you sit 10 entrepreneurs in the room and say, what's your biggest challenge? They will say, finance. capital. Mm, no, capital. there's so many it's names capital. for it. Capital, <laughs> finance, Working funding, capital. investment. <laughs> they, they have a lot of names for it. Cash. Money, cash. <laughs> yes, and I don't dispute that. It's um, mm. the Yoruba was saying that um, is a person that has cash, 
that knows trading. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. So, yes, I agree with you that you need cash, but that in itself is not the end. It's not even the beginning. It's not the end. It's just a part of the process. Mm. So it's important to understand where has the business really gone afoot. Again, it might not be that you need money. So when you say people need money now, my store was burnt. Mm. The instinctive thing for them to do is they got the money, I'm going to take another store. Exactly. But the question mm. is, do you really need another store? In the beginning. Okay, so I was going to say that in terms of communication, you've not answered um, AK's second question, right? Have you? He was working. He okay, was working okay maybe you should go ahead. I was going to just say because in terms of communication, what about your landlords, right? Because outside of some people are in rented stores, like for instance, the mall, I hear the government is saying that they want to give them um, tax rebate and all yeah. of those things, some things to just help ease it off. Mm -hmm. So what about your landlord, you know? Even if you communicate with them, can they really help? Uh, you know, <laughs> because uh, they will also tell you that they, they are also in this situation that, with you. That, that is on a on a case by case. Yes, it really because people differ, and there is no law that mandates a private Entity. individual to uh, give you any kind of succor. Or yeah, because we know the major small businesses what takes up the chunk of their right. is rent. You know, and so for for people that they, their stores have been looted, you know, I'm just wondering how that could play. But answer the other question. I think that was about. Um, yeah. So. The, the question, the part you're answering is what are the other strategies? So you have started out with assessment and then you talked about communication, communication. so you can sure. continue. Okay, so the next part after communication now is you've communicated with people. Now at the point of assessment, you already know what you need. Maybe let's assume that now what you need is cash. Mm -hmm. Now it's now your duty to sit down what are the options available. Exactly. For me, there are a lot of grants out there, a lot of opportunities out there. Um, and information is key in assessing them. Information is key in assessing them. And um, one critical thing they will ask you is your plan. So if you know you're going to seek fund, now you need to sit down if you don't have a plan before. And putting a plan together is not as complicated as will make it seem. It's not um, rocket science. Essentially what they're asking you is, what are your plans for the well, business? Me. Let me tell you something. Sorry, darling. Sorry, dear. <laughs> You see, yeah, but, I mean, the, the challenge I have with people like you, but I will not say you because I've not worked <laughs> with you, <laughs> but the, people, the, the challenge I have with a lot of people that are like business consultants and all of that, they don't know how to separate things. Now, we have SMEs, we have MSMEs, we have small businesses. You know, you should be able to tailor your services for a business that is making 100,000 Naira as monthly income. And for a business that is making one million there, I know you say that some of people are not your clients. So, so before you go there, <laughs> let me answer you. But I'm just saying that if we want to help, really help small businesses, mm -hmm. for them to understand that these structures are important for growth, right? So why can't we tailor the services that would suit you? Say, okay, you know what? For your kind of business, I have some rookies that I can assign to you mm -hmm. and we can we can do a package of and 50K. It doesn't right. necessarily be a rookie. I don't I even know. I don't so know. maybe you should help me answer. Okay. But so you understand, you understand where I'm I understand going. where you're coming but from. But what she was saying is basically that um, how do you break it down to small businesses? Like Mama Basira has a shop. Mama yeah. Yabo has a shop. Okay. 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 How do you, okay. want to uh, uh, how do you break down that. all this business plan to somebody now, like that? Let me be very honest with you. After working in this industry for more than seven years, I can tell you for a fact that not everybody that is drowning needs help. Huh. Well, that's so true and powerful. <laughs> not everybody that is hungry needs food. Hmm. And not everybody that is homeless needs a home. Ha. Hmm. <laughs> we should allow him. I'm short of words. Allow him you just left me speechless. Okay. <laughs> Please. They go have out there from the important. bridge hmm. and just pick randomly, go on the shop, pick randomly three to five people, clothe them, put them in a house. I can assure you in the next Some one week, a whole lot of them will be back on that street. Very true. They are used to Very it. True. That is what they understand. That is how they know it. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be that place of self-understanding and coming to the point. There's an adage that says you can force a donkey to the river. But you, can't you can't force, force it to, to drink, drink water. water. So at the beginning of my career, one of the things I focused on so much was trying to force a lot of donkey to drink water. Mm -hmm. And I discovered it was counterproductive. They don't understand what you're trying to offer them. They don't see the value in it. So even 1,000 era, they don't see it as it's like, I'm just giving you money to come and talk. Hmm. Hmm. So in the real sense of it, not to try to be what you said, not all customers are your customer. Hmm. And that is why in my own capacity, one of the things I've tried to do is I create mass programs and events that are free. 
I do host events. I've done events free in Lagos. I don't okay, things you like know that. what? I was going to even interrupt. So I was waiting for you to say that first. And I was going to say, oh, oh, there are opportunities, boundless opportunities out there. And he made a very valid point is, do you as an SME, you know, recognize this as, as an, an important thing? Exactly. Yeah. Because... Hmm. A lot of financial institutions, do you know how much they spend on capacity building and they beg customers to, to attend? Come. They pay for it. It's free of charge. And that's one. Of those percentage that attended, how many of them are going to implement it. what you said? Hmm. See, consulting is expensive. I, I tell people I'm very expensive. I'm not cheap. <laughs> and why is that? Because what I offer is intellectual property. Yeah. Sometimes I sleep 3 a.m., 4 a.m., working on clients' projects. Why you are sleeping on your bed and thinking, how do I make this better for you? Mm. Exactly. How do I make this work for you? I'm not spending time with my family. You have to pay that in a way. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so we have some questions on... Um, okay. Let me take with mine, then AK and um, Isi will take this. Angela says, how can we measure what was lost? Not sure we have enough data points to measure. Because we know we talked about this. Yes, yes. You know, so how do we even measure? If you say you want to bounce back and all of that, how do you measure what was lost? Okay. Then Sally is saying that people need... Um, breaks um, like tax um, tax breaks um, loan repayment breaks bill repayment uh, breaks and any other breaks that Please, can help let's be honest with ourselves <laughs> i can i can boldly say how many of the sme right now i'm mm. talking about tax breaks it would yes it's my ameliorate and reduce tax. it but many of them are even paying tax how much is the percentage of the tax okay there's a there's a program there's a um a relief right now for SMEs. If you don't make up to 25 million naira in a year yes. this year, you don't pay CIT, don't, complaint income tax, which that. is 30% of your profit. Hmm. So, in the first instance, how many even pay tax? So, that is not the bane of it. Hmm. The bane of it is back to the basics. Who are you really serving? Hmm. See, most businesses have run for a long time on whims and caprices of the owners. They've run on the ego of the owner. Hi, I'm an entrepreneur. Yes. It's like a title, it's like a badge you own with honor. Mm -hmm. They've not really been doing business. They've, they've been playing to the gallery. Exactly. They've been Instagram sensations. Mm. They've been Instagram celebrities. As, and then it takes just about 5,000 hours to be a CEO in Nigeria today. Mm. Just get a designer to design for you. Mm. Get, go to where they print and print card of 5,000 hours, 100 MDCU. pieces. MDCU. CEO of any company. <laughs> Yeah. So the problem is actually, do you even, even before the vandalization and COVID-19, I think I did something with the financial institution and during COVID-19, we had a webinar and the bane of the question, we got oh, close to a thousand questions and everything was revolving around finance. Hmm. And on the, on the webinar, I told them, I said, see, the finance is not your major point. If you get the money today, you will misuse it. Mm -hmm. I had a client in 2017, she got um, money from one, I think Tony Lumelo, one of the these mm. people, okay. before we met, she got about 1.6 million at that time. And then we met about six months later. She boldly told me, like, she felt like the money was a cost for her. Why? That because she used she that money like to capacity. create the, um, the kind of um, image that she's not yet ready for. Mm. So getting the money, the next thing, she took um, a fashion business, she took an office in an eyebrow area, which took about 50% of the money. Wow. No customers yet. Wow. No amount that budgeted was, that for was marketing. That was like putting the cart before the horse. And that's exactly. what many businesses do. Hmm. So if you give them money today, trust me, many will come back to that point. It's very systemic. And I think uh, another thing is because we have a lot of accidental entrepreneurs. Hmm. It's not born out of, I really want to solve an issue, so hmm. let me chase the knowledge to do it. People get into business because I couldn't get a job. I couldn't travel out of hmm. the country. I'm tired of working for someone. I want to be my own CEO. A lot of reasons that are not really deep down enough to give you um, access, access. To, to the kind of growth you need for a business owner. Because business is, is hard. A lot of work. <laughs> Let's see, take your questions quickly. We're out of time. It's absorbing. Like okay. accidental entrepreneurs, and that's so true. Go, yes, go ahead. Isi. Absolutely. Okay, this isn't a, a question, actually, it's a, it's a statement. Okay. So he says, there's no name here though, says, as a businessman that has integrity, you will always get back all you have lost to hoodlums by your business partners giving you credit facilities. Mm. Do you believe in that? That, well, that was what I just yeah. said. It might not be all. Exactly, mm -hmm. because I'm but, going to say, I'm sorry, but I'm going to say that some people think that everything is about credit facilities mm. because not, not a lot of businesses enjoy credit facilities. Mm. Hmm. So it's, to be honest, 
a whole lot of people are going to come to your aid if you've really been in business. Mm -hmm. Now, notice and underline the word of that business. Mm -hmm. If what you've not you've been doing is not been trading, see, people do a whole lot of funny stuff so, and see a lot of things on Instagram. Mm. People buy their product, pay for it, <laughs> and put the Instagram shot <laughs> to show that I am selling. Mm -hmm. People pay their friends money to buy from them yeah. and um, yeah. that's make that's it look like that. Ah. Let me quickly open that kind of room. <laughs> Let me so quickly. when they okay. have this kind of vandalization, who exactly is going to bail them out? Nobody. They never had customers because they will the use. Place. They will give you money. Say come and patronize. Ah, Instagram, Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> okay, from Rolake. I consider trust a fundamental capital. Mm. We as a country need to build trust more. And then also we have from Ade, it says, Good evening, ladies. Happy belated birthday to you, Uwa. Aww. To the guests, please collect your balance from the customer after you have rendered the service before they take advantage on you. Customers are not always right of their actions or attitude. Ade, thank you. Thank but you, the customers Ade. are not happy that uh, you are sending this. <laughs> but, but, you know, so as we wrap up, because we have like one minute, one minute to go, um, what would be the advice you're going to give to the businesses, for instance, that have been vandalized? Um, during this process. So we've said, okay, do a proper business assessment. So when you've done the assessment, um, what would be the next step? What, what did we say was next? You communicate to your stakeholders and all of that. So after all that is done, um, what is the encouragement you, you want to give them, you know, to say that it is going to be fine, they'll be able to come back, you know? Okay. Because a lot of them are traumatized. Okay, one thing I will give you is um, nature has a way of reorganizing us. So it has a way of moving us. And most times it is hard. Regeneration, growth is painful. It pushes you out of your comfort zone. Now, it might not look like it right now, but if you can take the positive out of this, there are a lot of learning points. If you've been running your business the right way before, there's a learning point for you here. There's something you need to learn. Maybe your business should have pivoted to online for a long time, but because Brick and mortar has worked for you for a long time. You are having difficulty letting it go. Mm. Mm. The spirit is saying something to you. Mm -hmm. Now I'm sounding like a pastor. Yes, so. <laughs> and Preacher. even if you have been doing it the wrong way, mm -hmm. then it's saying something to you. Go back to the basics. Mm. Even if you've been using your friends to make it look like you are selling, I understand. Mm. People see that you've been selling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can get back now. I know people that don't have shops, that don't have stores, that do a lot of things online. I got my first office more than five years into business. Mm. I operate from the comfort of my bedroom mm. and sitting room. In fact, when I hired my first staff, my sitting room was the office. So I just come from my room, I dress up by <laughs> 8 a.m., I come to the office, there's no work, there's nothing, I, I'll sit down there, Absolutely. and by 4 p.m. I'll close. So mindset is important. Mm. The mindset is important. How you take this determines what you get out of it. How you take this determines what you get out of it. And then have a vision, and that is not being pastoric or mm. motivational speaking. Mm. I, when I say vision, I don't mean one grandiose plan. I mean, in 2021, I want to sell 1,000 clothes. Let that be your driving force. Mm. When you sleep, when you wake up, meditate on it day and night. That is what I want to sell. So when you are sitting on your hand, it seems like you're not doing enough. You, you know go that. back to the drawing board. I need Absolutely. To do this. I think on that note, it. we can wrap it up. Thank <laughs> you so much. We're going to... I, I we're gonna yeah, we are definitely going to bring him back. Thank you. Uh, no, I mean, we had so much fun. Thank you Absolutely. so much. Thank you so much. I, I mean, I picked a lot from the conversation today, and I'm sure someone out there, you know, has found some strategies that you can use to bounce back. Mm -hmm. So please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m. It's been a very insightful conversation. And keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms at Wish Your Africa One or at Plus TV Africa as we continue to hear what you're saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. That's from Winston Church Hill. So we'll see you tomorrow live at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy your evening. Bye.